So today we will build a patch from scratch with a new sequencer from Seaside Modular Produce. Um, all of the modules I will be using today are available for free, so all of you can follow along. And if you are new to Modular or to VCV Rack, have a look in the description. There's a link to various courses I have for beginners to Modular and beginners to VCV Rack, right? So if you uh, if you are interested, there's a link in the description. So first of all, I'm using here, of course, the mind meld mixer, and I have also a sand reverb with plateau, and I have also the cable color key module from Inclan because I will use um, color coding, and maybe it will make things easier to follow. Um, and of course, I have already one sequencer here, right? So let's start with the first voice, and um, this will be the VCO, the VCV VCO. I will send the sine wave to a VCA, um, audio will be red, and I will use an envelope to open this VCA, the ADSR from VCV, and CV will be, your control voltage will be uh, green. Right now, Proteus will output pitch and gates, so the volt per octave uh, output that will be, uh, pitch will be yellow, will go to the volt per octave input on the sequencer, and gates, clocks, and triggers will be blue. So the gate will go and gate the um, the envelope, right? And we can already send this to the mixer. And now we need a way to clock or to drive the sequencer. And for this, we will use an LFO. I will just use the VCV LFO, right? And the square wave or the pulse wave will go to the clock input of the sequencer, right? And already we get notes. I will already go ahead and add some reverb, right? And by the way, yes, I'm recovering from a cold, so my voice might be a bit scratchy, but maybe, maybe it will add to the, <laughs> to the experience. Right, so now let's continue uh, with the sequencer before we continue with the voice. Right, so the sequence will already change every now and then and that will be according to the lambda or lambda um, control. Basically, this will set the number of steps, and um, that after this number of steps, um, there is a higher chance the sequence will change. Right, so here it's set to 20, 20, which means that after 20 steps, there is a higher chance, the more we cross this line, there is a higher chance the sequence will change. Right, so if I change this to, let's say, about, uh, let's say, seven steps or eight steps, after eight steps, and you can see the blue lights here will become brighter and brighter. After eight steps, there is a higher chance the sequence will change completely. Right, the um, white lights, let's make this a bit quicker. The white lights show that the sequence now changed. Right now we can add probability to octave jumps, so the sequence will jump up and down in uh, octaves, right? So this will change the probability, so let's say about uh, 40%. We can also add probability for mutating the individual notes, so not the whole sequence, but the individual notes, right? Like maybe a bit more, maybe about 50%. Right, in the right click menu, we can change this also to transpose the notes by octave. So mutation can transpose notes by an octave. I will turn this on. We can change also the range of octave jumps. Now it's one, so one octave. I can change this to two or to zero, but I will leave this at one for now. We can also change the scales, right? In this case, I will just leave it at uh, major, which can also be minor sometimes, depending on the notes. Now we can change the density of the notes, so basically how many gates will be actually coming out, right? So if I send, set this to about 50%, we have half the sequence. This is not probability, this will actually take out notes or take out gates. So now we get just half of the sequence. Right, now we can also change the length of the gate Right, so if we have a different decay and release times, um, we will get different envelopes according to the gate length. Right, so if I have a bit of a longer attack, but a longer decay and a shorter release, 
right? And the gate is long, we get a longer, longer notes, right? If the gate is short, we get shorter notes, right? So we can already modulate this and I will use walk from Borg Audio for this, or Borg Audio. I will show you this also on the scope. So walk will output smooth random voltages that will not jump so much up and down. Well, they, uh, but they will smoothly, um, right, move up and down. Right, so we can use this, maybe we'll take the rate a bit down. Uh, we can use this to modulate the, not the density, the gate. Right, so now sometimes we will get longer notes, sometimes shorter notes. Right, and actually we can also modulate the density, why not? But I will take the scale a bit down just so it's not going all the way left and right, but it stays somewhere here. Right, so this will go to the density CV input. Okay, now let's add another walk even to modulate the rate of the LFO. Right, maybe also a bit slower, just so also the clock is always moving. Very nice. And now let's add a delay. I will use Tap Dancer from Flag, the lovely Tap Dancer. Maybe a bit more of a tech, actually. Right, something like this. Right, the Tap Dancer delay from Flag. Again, everything is available for free. Right, and now I can add some drive, just a bit. And the tap dancer delay has the ducking or add ducking feature that will basically take the level or the volume of the delayed signal down whenever the original, whenever the dry signal, the input is playing, right, which will add a bit more space. You can also change the delay times just to get something a bit different. feedback right something like this and now let's make this voice a bit brighter I will use thorns also from flag which is an overdrive module right just to make this a bit uh, brighter and I can use one walk maybe to modulate the tone Let's also add modulation to the attack of the envelope, maybe from the first walk here. Okay, now let's continue the patch. We will add chords, and to, for this we will use a shift register. Right, a shift register will um, sample the incoming pitch in this case, just like sample and hold but it will also shift it down its outputs. So like this, we can basically build chords. So the input will come again, a yellow signal or a yellow cable from the pitch output from the volt per octave. And for triggering, we need something to trigger to tell the shift register when to sample the pitch. For this, we will use a clock divider. I will use the one from count modular. Maybe we can put this here and the clock or the gates will come from the sequencer, so basically it will divide the gates from the sequence. Right, and I will use a divided by three, and for this we have to change the modes here to prime numbers, prime or also decimal will also work. Right, and then we have here divided by three. And now we will use three oscillators, so we will have a chord with three different notes. I will use energy from the geodesics 1, 2, and 3. Right, already I can use the outputs, three outputs from the shift register 1, 2, and 3. Right, I will mix them with the mixer from Borg Audio 1, 2, and 3, and I will pan one voice to the left, one voice to the right. Let's take the levels maybe a bit down. And this will go to the mixer, and of course, of course, of course, we will add 
a nice reverb, let's solo this for a second. Notes of reverb, maybe take the level even lower. Right, so now as you can hear we have three note chords. Now I don't want them to play all the time just like this as a drone, so we can actually activate the internal LFOs on energy and have them coming in and out. So how this will work? Basically each energy has two oscillators, right? And one oscillator will modulate the amplitude, by default this is how energy works, will modulate the amplitude of the um, first oscillator. Right, so we can set this, um, we can set the second oscillator to be in LFO rates and then we get modulation um, in amplitude and this we change with this button here and we go to the yellow mode right and now we can change the frequency right and you can already hear we have movement and now I will even add more movement with opt from instrual which is basically eight LFOs. I'm going to modulate the momentum on energy. Momentum is basically FM, so the oscillators will modulate their own frequency, basically a sort of a feedback, um, feedback modulation. This will change the brightness of the first oscillator and it will change the shape of the LFO. So we get interesting amplitude modulation shapes, right? So I'm going to do this to both oscillators and maybe here a bit quicker and here slower, right? And I will use one of the oct modules to modulate the frequency or the rate of oct. So we also here we have movement, everything is moving, everything is organic, right? A nice generative patch. unmute the first voice. Okay, now let's add a bass. So maybe I will add this here. Now I would like the bass to have a rhythm to it, but the rhythm will also be generative. So we will use another Proteus um, sequencer. I will drive it again with an LFO. Right, again this will go to the clock input. For the voice itself we will use kick all from Befaco. Yes, kick all can also be a great bass voice. Right, we can already connect everything. So we have pitch, roll per octave will go to the tune input gate output will go to the trigger input we can already send this to the mixer maybe i will solo it also so we can have a listen to it maybe something like this right right we will change the the rate here uh, in a second, I just want to concentrate on the sound first. Right, so first of all, let's create rhythmic variation with sample and hold. So I will use the super sample and hold from count modular. I will trigger it with the LFO. I can take also the probability a bit down so it will not always output different voltage. And this will modulate the density so we get different variation. Right, and now let's continue with the sound and then come back to the sequencer later. I will add another layer to the bass. So first of all, I will send it through a low pass filter. This will be um, tangents from volt. Right, and I will take the shape, or oh, not all the way up, but quite up so we have something brighter. Right, something like this. Right, and now I will send the output from kick all itself. So before the filter to another tap dancer delay. So we'll get delay mostly on the higher frequencies. So let's set this up. I will add another tap dancer. Again, I will use the signal from kick all. So before the filter, 
I will change the mix all the way up because we already have we already have the dry signal. I will also sync actually the delay to the LFO. Right, and now here we have a built-in filter. If I take the high pass all the way up, it's about 300 Hz. Right, so we, we will have delay mostly on the higher frequencies. Right, let's have a listen to this and add, of course, lots and lots of reverb. It will be quite loud at the beginning. Let me just take this down a bit. Already I will add reverb. Right. Now in the right click menu I can change the clock resolution, so if I want the delay to be slower I will change this to 4, let's say. Again add the ducking feature, a bit of drive. Right, now I can take the LFO a bit down. So we still get something rhythmic, but a bit slower. something like this and now let's go back to the sequencer now we will not add um, octave jumps again I want this to stay as a bass voice in the range of a bass but we can change the length and get something a bit more repetitive so if I change the length of the sequence to be let's say 4 right get something a bit more repetitive, I can add some mutation. Right, maybe we will change this even more. So just let's unmute everything and see how it sits in the mix. Something like this. Very nice. Okay, now let's add another sequence with another sequencer, with another produce. Right, again, I will use a different LFO. So nothing is synced in, in this patch, everything is running by itself. So another LFO to run it. I will use another VCO. Right, I will already connect the pitch. And let's listen to a triangle for a second. Right, of course I will add already a nice amount of reverb, even though it's just a simple voice, because reverb is live. And with this voice that I have now, after the cold, it sounds even better. Reverb is life. <laughs> okay, so now we have a triangle wave. Right, let's make this a bit quicker, maybe about 4 hertz, something, something like this. I just want to concentrate on the sequence and show you the lock feature. Right, so I can lock the sequence all the way to the right. Right, so now it will play the same sequence again and again, if I change this, let's say, to 7 steps. Right, so again, now it will always repeat. But if I lock this to mode 1, if I lock this to the center, right, it will still be locked, but now I can introduce some mutation, for example, and octave jumps, or probability, right? So we still get something repetitive, but it's still ever-changing. Okay, now let's disconnect this for a second, and we will send a saw wave to a series of band pass filters in series, right? So one, two, and three. And a saw wave will go to the first one from there, to the second one from there, to the third, right? In series, this will go to the mixer already. 
right? So it will sound like this. And of course, right, each one of them will have, if I take the resonance up, will have an effect on the sound, right? And all three of them will create an interesting sound. And again, they are in series, so this uh, filter will be affected by the next one, and this filter will be affected by the next one. Right, so just we get an interesting um, sound. Let's add another oct to modulate the cutoff points 1, 2, and 3. Right, so now the voice will always come in and out with different timbres depending on the uh, position of the cutoff. Right, we can also add some modulation, maybe make it slower, add some modulation for the panning, so this voice will also pan left and right. Right, I can also use another oct, or another output from oct to modulate the frequency of the LFO a bit. Just a bit. And again, I will use another walk. Right, really nice, nice and subtle, another walk to modulate the frequency of oct. Right, let's listen to this in context. Maybe a bit more reverb. Let's add another layer with some noise, right? So I will use white noise, right? And this will go through two bandpass filters. In this case, they will not be in series, they will be parallel. And I will pan them also left and right. Let's just make sure that it's not too loud, right? So I will pan them left and right right something like this and I can use oct again oct to modulate the frequency of the bandpass filters maybe just a tiny bit of resonance right and now to make this a bit maybe I will solo this I wanted to solo it let's solo it to make this a bit less noisy and a bit more grainy just like my voice <laughs> um, we can send this through chances so chances is a Bernoulli gate usually usually you use it with gates or triggers or clocks and stuff like this but you can also use it with audio this will work also with uh, branches from mutable instruments right so if I send the, uh, the white noise or the noise directly to it I can start adding uh, or, or taking away actually the audio and create a more grainy voice Right? Something like this. Right, so it's a bit grainier. Uh, we need also, again, also reverb. Yeah, nice, take this down. Right, so we have also some texture. Now let's add one more last voice with another sequencer and another LFO to drive it. 
for the voice we will use the FM operator and the pitch first of all um, I will send through a slew limiter right I want to make it glide for now I want to make it glide between notes so for this I will use the process module from VCV which has slew also right so I will take the pitch from the slew output right now we'll turn off the um, internal envelope um, can be that you have this by default off I have this by default on right so now the uh, oscillator will always run so if I connect this to the mixer and add again lots and lots of reverb maybe I will solo this also just so we can listen to what's going on right so now if I take this a bit quicker, let's say about 3 Hz, and now I can add slew. Right, but what I want actually, I don't want glide or I don't want portamento. I want glissando, so I want that the oscillator will play every note in between. So for this what we can do, we can use a quantizer right after the sequencer before uh, after the slew limiter, sorry, right? After the slew limiter, and I will just change the scale to be um, major because we have a major scale set, right? And it's by default uh, C. Right, so now I will send the pitch after the slew limiter to a quantizer. So now we will get everything in between. Right? I can add mutation, an octave, jumps or uh, probability, take the lambda down so the changes the sequencer will play or will change more often. Right, I have it on four steps, so after four steps there's a higher probability for it to change. Right, I can change the length also to let's say about 4. I will use oct, one of the ox, octs <laughs> here to modulate the uh, feedback. Right, so the timbre basically. And another one also, let's use this one for example to modulate the panning. Maybe take this a bit down. something like this right so we get every note in between here as you can hear it's a sort of a solo line if you will maybe even a bit lower right things are coming in and out there is noise there are other sequences nothing is in sync the bass is nice and slow but still rhythmic repetitive but with variation right Proteus is a really interesting sequencer for this type of patches not only actually you can also use it and um, because of its lock function you can use it also for not so generative patches but also for something more repetitive but with movement again everything is available for free um, and that was it I'm going to let the patch uh, run for a bit I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you find it useful I hope you followed along um, if you want to share your results with me feel free to tag me here on YouTube or on Instagram if you add something to this patch if you tweak it in any way feel free to share your results with me thank you again for watching cheers